Hello and welcome back to The Bottom Line, where we break down some of the main business and economic stories of the day. I'm Aleksandra Marhevich. Now, at uh, the Warsaw Security Forum, Klavia Czerwińska sat down with Heather Atkins, Google's Vice President of Security Engineering, to discuss the escalating cyber threats facing industries worldwide. Now it's the time to talk cybersecurity, and for that, I'm joined by my next guest, Heather Adkins, Vice President of the Security Engineering Team at Google. Thank you so much for joining us here on stage. Thank you for having me. So let's talk cybersecurity. In terms of that very field, what are some of the biggest threats and attacks that are most common now and in years to come? So we have seen an increase in the pace of attacks and the sophistication of attacks over the past few years. This is everything from attacks with a geopolitical nexus, so related to conflict mm -hmm. around the world, but also criminal elements, uh, attacks like ransomware, and also common fraud and scams against uh, kind of the general population, and we see this worldwide. And when we're talking about ransomware, uh, are there more or less of those attacks? What do, they, what do they focus on? Where are the targets? Like many kinds of attacks, we see an ebb and flow, an up and down, in what kinds of attacks are popular. In the past few years, we have seen an increase in ransomware. It is incredibly effective. Uh, the idea here is that the victim gets malware, um, the threat actor then has access to the data, which they encrypt and hold for ransom. And in the, this is particularly challenging for many sectors, um, mm -hmm. the banking sector, uh, healthcare, very notably in the last year, where hospitals have been taken offline, blood banks taken offline, denying people life safety uh, or life saving uh, care. And that is uh, particularly challenging, of course, because if you need health care at any one particular moment, you can't get it. Um, but also, if you can't pay the ransom, maybe um, you know, in some jurisdictions around the world, it's illegal to pay. Um, and you may not want to pay. You may not want to incentivize the market out there. Um, and so this is a particularly pernicious problem. But when we think of ransomware in terms of cyber uh, criminals and businesses, um, is there a lot of extortion of money from bigger businesses? Is there some sort of a trend? Or is it both uh, you know, private people mm. and businesses alike? We see it against individuals. We see it against small to medium-sized business. And we see it against large business as well. Uh, so it's really an attack that's effective across a wide variety of victims. So um, we see that there is increasing sophistication in cybersecurity. This is something that I'm, I'm sure Google is definitely mm -hmm. concerned with. And based on social engineering, it still seems to be quite common. So what's your advice on that? We are devising technologies to neutralize social engineering. One of the most common uh, social engineering attacks is to ask you for your password and to trick you into thinking you're giving your password to a legitimate person. Nobody's ever going to legitimately ask you for your password. However, we think that by no longer using passwords is a way to help users realize that this is not something you should ever do. So we've invented technology like security keys. This is a small USB device that actually does the authentication for you. And by doing that, there's never really a password for you to know or a password for you to hand over. But even if you did, the bad guy doesn't have your security key. And we've been using this inside Google for quite some time, and we've not had a successful phishing mm -hmm. attack for a very long time. So you just mentioned technology, which is incredibly important, and technology is supposed to mm. serve the people. Mm. But I wonder if there is any sort of an awareness um, that we can spread among people to, and maybe some sort of an education mm. um, behind this growing increase in, in the cyber attacks. Mm -hmm. Because we're living in a very fast-paced, ever-changing world where mm. the cybersecurity threat is bigger and bigger, and it's going to affect more and more people. I give people two pieces of advice. Number one, multi-factor authentication for your online accounts. This is a code. It might be sent to you by SMS. It could be a security key that you have. It is a second additional factor on top of your password. This makes it very difficult to attack you. Um, most online service providers now offer this as an option when you log in. 
please do that. And the second piece of advice I would give is make sure you're updating your device. So if you have a mobile phone, a laptop, a workstation, make sure you're applying the security updates when they become available. But just know that in the meantime, we are trying to make it much easier for you so that you don't have to think as much about this. I uh, also wanted to touch upon AI because this has been a very, very big uh, mm. topic of discussion among even, even you know, general society and people who are concerned with their safety. Um, you can you can talk about arts in terms of AI. You can talk about usage of pictures, as we heard from Meta, uh, Meta before, uh, usage of uh, personal pictures and uh, voice recordings, voice material. So the, it's all out there. Would you say that um, AI is going to change significantly the world of cybersecurity? It already has. We've been using AI in various uh, components of technology for over a decade. And that's maybe something behind the scenes most people don't realize. If you have a Gmail account with us, we've been using it to filter spam and uh, fraudulent attacks against you for a very long time. And we're actually able to filter out about 99.9% .9 of all attacks immediately without you having to do anything. What will change, we think, going forward is we now have generative AI. Google's model is Gemini. And we think this will become a general purpose tool built into most technology that you use today. I like to think of it as a calculator. Uh, when calculators were invented, it sat on your desk, it was a separate device, it seemed like its own thing, but now we have calculators built into smartwatches and phones and almost all technology. You're going to see that with generative AI as well. For example, one of the things we do in Gmail is you can now take some very terse notes, not good grammar, not good sentences, and actually ask the AI to write you a better email. And this will save people time, um, and it'll start to just feel like a, a general purpose tool over time. That's very interesting, but I suppose that some people would actually be quite concerned that there is less and less, we delegate a lot more to the AI instead of uh, working on things ourselves. So there's also a discussion on creativity, but that's a topic mm. for another time. Um, we're talking about AI, and you mentioned those systems that you have in place in order mm -hmm. to make sure that data is safe and the users are safe as well. But the bad guys can all also get their hands on AI as it's becoming more available. Mm -hmm. Um, is, is that the case, and how are you dealing with that problem? How do you address the issue? The threat actors are experimenting with generative AI in the same way that we are, and using their creativity. We have seen uh, the creation of synthetic content. Mm -hmm. That's one way they're using it. Um, they're using it to bridge the language gap. So they may speak one language and the target victim may speak another. This makes it easier to craft fraudulent messages to the victim. Um, we actually think, however, that despite the fact threat actors are going to use this, we as defenders have even more opportunities to use artificial intelligence. There's so much more that we do in the defensive space where it will give us an advantage that we think over time, over the next couple of years, we will start to see a reversal of who's winning. Um, and what would you say is the role of cybersecurity in Google? How does that work? If you could give us uh, an explanation of how does it work within your company. We have two missions. Number one, protect Google. Google, our internal infrastructure, our internal systems, is where we store the data that our users and customers trust us with. And then secondly, we want to build secure products. Chrome, Android, Google Cloud, when you use these products for the first time, we want them to be secure by default out of the box. Just like when you buy a car, it has a seat belt and roll, uh, a roll bar and airbags. You don't have to go buy those separate. That's the way we think about building our technology. So we have teams that focus on both of those missions. Um, and um, I wanted to ask about the Warsaw Security Forum. Before we began this interview, you mentioned that you are glad to see that there are different um, that there are different areas coming together. For example, the military and um, cybersecurity coming together in order to to talk, to have a discussion, and to work together. Why do you think that's important? I think cross-disciplinary discussions about solutions is very important. Um, the uh, the folks who are here at Warsaw Security Forum are experts in their fields. They have been working on these problems for a very long time. They have seen things. 
as cyber defenders, we can learn a lot from them and they from us. But we are also seeing now a blending of what we might consider traditional military um, uh, techniques and approaches blended with cybersecurity, and we are seeing this in conflicts all over the world. So also important for us to collaborate and see what can we do to help uh, the, the citizens of all nations. The intersectionality, definitely something to look forward to yeah. in terms of cybersecurity and military. Thank you so much, Thank Heather you Atkins, joining us. Um, Ladies and gentlemen, this was Heather Atkins, the Vice President, Security Engineering Team at Google. Uh, my name is Claudia Czerwinska. Please stay tuned here on TVP World. And that's the bottom line for today. And join us on Monday at 5 p.m. CET on TVP World. For more latest regional business stories, check us out on X and TVPWorld.com. Coming up next, World Talks. And remember that in the world of business, the bottom line is the only line that counts. Alexandra Marhevich signing off. Goodbye.